On today's episode of Locked On Suns, a big national TV matchup against the Los Angeles Lakers that has bigger stakes than you might think. And is Devin Booker making all NBA? We'll talk about it all. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past six seasons, a writer at suns.com and the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen. Late Tuesday into early Wednesday. Thanks for finding us wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube. Hit follow or subscribe wherever that might be. If you are on Twitter, follow at Locked On PHX Suns. If you are on YouTube, drop a comment down below with your thoughts on this Lakers matchup or whatever might be in your head about these Suns as we head toward the stretch run, the end of the season, and the playoffs. Aaron Edwards is here, as he is every week, checking in. We will not be here on Friday, so we're doing a little bit of an earlier check-in than normal. We'll get right into this Lakers matchup, Aaron, in a second. Today's show, guys, though, brought to you by Ultimate Basketball GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing a basketball franchise, this game is for you. Download the game by visiting ultimatebasketballgm.com or look it up in your app store and use the promo code locked on all caps in the game to get a 100% free boost for your franchise. Aaron, it's a very March show today uh, in the NBA. <laughs> um, it feels like the league puts all these bad games during March Madness. It's like they have a built in mechanism with all the schedule writers that they're like, any of the ugly ones that no one wants to watch. Just put them all in the first weekend of March Madness. Like, there's no national TV. It feels like all the games are are bad. But we do have this Lakers game, finally, uh, which should be fun. You know how I know, though, speaking of the Lakers, that it is March, is the amount of hype that Austin Reeves <laughs> has been getting. <laughs> this man got nominated for Player of the Week. And I think somebody, I don't even know who it was. I don't even want to give them the dignity of putting their name onto it because I think it's so ridiculous. Saying that he could get in the neighborhood of $50 million in free agency. What are we doing? Is it just March? Is it just the Lakers? Is it both? It's it's the Lakers. The second you put that uniform on, you're more... Did we forget about... Um, uh... Horton, how they were talking about him and not wanting to give up him for what, Buddy Hill? It's just what happens when you become a Laker. They just over exaggerate. And yeah, it's just, it's insane what they do to dudes that are average to above average. They were right about Caruso and they didn't even keep him. So that's what yeah. I was going to say. The funny <laughs> one is that that one that they got right was Caruso, but. Uh, for whatever reason, he was undervalued. He's not even making $10 million. He's like on a Jay Crowder contract. He's like the best <laughs> perimeter defender in the entire NBA, and they didn't even want to keep him. Uh, I don't I don't get it. Um, the other March type of NBA story is, why is Dylan Brooks everywhere right now? Why is that the only NBA update that anybody seems to want is whatever Dylan Brooks is up to and however much the latest fine is for him? I Did I miss feels, something about us all caring? I, it's a two-year thing with just the NBA in March. It's like Adam Silver did like an American Ultra situation and took over and just activated Dylan Brooks. It's like, be crazy for a little bit. We still need the Seriously. news. There's nothing else happening. So we at least need something because he's the only thing that's really happening in the NBA right now. Like Lucas Hurt, the Suns are going through their stuff like, the West is still crazy, but it just seems like he's the only one that's sticking out, even though there's this really close race going on in the West. Dylan Brooks just was activated, and now he's just more insane than ever. It's really crazy. Maybe Ja you know really was probably, a mature one. <laughs> right? You know who? That's what I was going to say. You know who probably actually activated Brooks is somebody, John Morant's agent or something. They're like, hey, there's some nonsense going on with the Grizzlies and this guy's coming back and we don't really want to get too much attention on it. We did the Jalen Rose thing. If you could just shove a cameraman, get some technical fouls and get everybody thinking and talking about other stuff, we would very much appreciate it. I heard on the Levitard show, though, that cameraman is still not working. <laughs> like he actually oh. hurt the guy. 
Like he's missed oh a couple God. games as the cameraman for for Bally down there, which is, I guess, not not a joke. Um, let's talk about this Lakers game though. There is a real game, and it does have stakes. Uh, like you mentioned, the Western Conference race for both of these teams is a little tighter than I think either of them would like for it to be. It it feels like Anthony Davis will play. I, I don't think there's really any doubt about that. And on the other side, Durant obviously out, and then DeAndre Ayton. I guess not obviously on Durant. I have no idea. DeAndre Ayton out with the hip contusion that he missed last game with. Um, the Lakers have been really solid lately defensively. They're, they have the third best defense in the NBA over the past two weeks. They have a lineup that finally makes some sense. They've been playing. They're 6-4 and four in their last 10. It just feels like they make a little bit more sense, and yet they really haven't actually been able to make a push up the standings. I still just think a defense with some perimeter options, including the billionaire Austin Reeves and... Anthony Davis, who you won't have DeAndre Ayton to guard. I don't know what the line is. I can look it up in a second, but I am I crazy to think on the road this is a potential Suns loss? Yeah, there's no way we're favored to win this game. I think at the same time, it's just more of a March loss kind of thing. It seems like I don't think Ayton's really hurt. I said this two weeks ago when KD first got hurt. Like, I really think that we knew we were going to be four. I think before KD, it was like, we can go on a run and maybe get to two, but it just looks like we're stuck in that fourth spot and they're fine with it. And they're going to treat it as if we're going in with that fourth spot and they're going to treat everybody's bodies as such. So yeah, this is more of not like a scheduled loss. This is just a March and where we are right now loss. If we do lose, like I just think that we're shorthanded and they are willing to just kind of throw some of these games away for everybody to be healthy in when the playoffs start, which is kind of crazy because if you have pretty much a scheduled or March loss, like I still say Chris Paul needs to start sitting soon. Like he's still playing too much. And yeah, he missed a couple with an injury earlier, but he really needs to kind of just, we know what happened to him the last couple of playoffs. He burned out <laughs> and maybe he's just stubborn and telling Chris Paul not to play basketball is harder than it looks. But he knows what happened to his body. If we're going to have these scheduled losses or March losses while we're trying to go into the playoffs healthy, I say do it with everybody, not just with certain people. So you say all of that, and I I hear you. Um, the Clippers are only one half a game behind the Suns. It says half. It's one. I don't yeah. know why it says half in the standings. They're one, one game back from the Suns. The Suns' next three games are at – at the Lakers, at the Kings, home against the Sixers. They have two more games left against the Nuggets, and they have a game left against the Clippers later in the season. The Clippers' next few games are two in a row, home against the Thunder, home against the Pelicans, home against the Bulls. And so I would not be surprised <laughs> if when Kevin Durant comes back, assuming it is next Wednesday, and that's not even a sure thing, the Suns could be even with or behind the Clippers in the standings. And so I don't, I just don't understand in general why they are being so loose about it. Maybe they don't even care about getting to five. I guess the only difference between four and five is who gets home court in the first round, but otherwise it's not really all that different. Um, the Suns have a tiebreaker in conference record over the Clippers right now by three games, but really like two and a half. So I don't know, but they are definitely playing things patiently. I just think you lose games to the Thunder, you lose games to the Lakers, and all of a sudden you look up and that cushy spot in, in number four is just isn't there anymore. And I, so I looked it up. The, the Suns are uh, underdogs, but only by a point and a half. The money line is, is pretty much even, so not by much. But I think I would probably pick the Lakers tomorrow night. Yeah, it seems like Monty or James Jones just really – don't care until KD or AD or, or uh, Aiden gets back. So they're going to throw some of these away. I think the Thunder loss really was the one that kind of hurt because it would give you a little bit more leeway to kind of be loose with the, these other games. But yeah, it's like three or four game tough ones coming up. So it's, they must expect KD to be back fairly soon because the Nuggets game is going to probably be important. Well, not so the Nuggets. I think they're going to be pretty set in that spot. But we're going to have to kind of go on a 
well, just the way the playoffs work, I think you really want to start the playoffs on sort of a win streak and in a good groove. Mm -hmm. So I think that's That's how it happened last year, right? Yeah. So I think that's when the starters are probably going to get going and really the team is going to be fully like with Shamit back and Monty's going to know, have to know what lineup he's going to be going with in the eight man and all of that. So I think that they want to close out the season strong more than just this little spot right here. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I I would not, I, I would pick the Lakers, I think. And and I do feel like Anthony Davis is going to have a big night. I mean, you know, he, even if he it, gave us 40 last time, so I was at that game. <laughs> so, exactly. It's like, even yeah. if Biombo and Landale have something to say, they're going to get in foul trouble. Like we, we know what this is going to look like. Even, even when the Suns beat the Lakers in the playoffs, it definitely was not because Anthony Davis was, was playing poorly. He, he was great. Then he got hurt. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't have to revisit any of that, but like series might go different. Like, whoa, Brandon, relax. Work. You're sounding like a Laker fan on Twitter right now. I know. I know I am. <laughs> um, look, I just think uh, we were, there's always these, these national TV games against the Lakers toward the end of the season. And I feel like something crazy always happens. Like the year that, that the Suns made the finals, it was that game where all of a sudden Dario Saric finished and Aiton got benched. Do you remember? And it was like, yeah. what? <laughs> like, is this, is Monty sending some sort of signal? And obviously it didn't matter, but anyway, uh, Devin Booker's been awesome. If they're going to win tomorrow night, it's going to be in large part because of him. I'm curious about how you feel about all NBA. And I'm curious if people think Booker has any shot at all. I think his statistical case is great, but he has not played a lot. And the team is obviously hovering around 500. So we'll dive into his case and who might make it, who might not next. First today's show guys brought to you by the ultimate basketball GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing a basketball franchise, your dream can come true with Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. Manage every aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. In the game, you're responsible for hiring coaches and assistants, trading and training players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency in the draft, and of course, all the normal ups and downs of a season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. You can have a star player go down hurt. You can have an owner who just refuses to make deals. Like They make this stuff very realistic, very soap opera-ish in the best way, just like we all love about our beloved NBA. Locked On listeners, get a 100% free boost to their franchise when you use the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code on the site, or look it up in your favorite app store. That's probasketballgm.com to learn more and scan that code, or probasketballgm in your favorite app store. Ultimate Basketball GM. Start your dynasty today. Devin Booker, Aaron, is averaging, let me get it right here, 28 points per game, which would be a career high, on 50% shooting from the field, 37% from three, 84% from the free throw line. He's averaging five and a half assists, which would be his most of the Chris Paul era here, and uh, turnovers have been about the same as they were last year. I think you could make the case it's his best season ever, which uh, we talked about a little bit how his game has grown a couple weeks ago on the show but there are a lot of guards and yeah. even if he plays the rest of the sun's games, I think that will put him at 55 games played. Do you think he has a real shot at all NBA this year? Yeah, I think it'll be tough with the addition of De'Aaron Fox. Now, like I think he's going to be the odd man out with some, he's going to get bumped out with Fox going in. I think it's going to be pretty much close to, sort of the same people <laughs> it's obviously going to be luca it's going to be fox it's going to be um um jeez i mean mitchell i would think yeah right? <laughs> yeah I mitchell think, it's, i mean we can yeah, lay out all the candidates i i feel like it's 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 luca it is i i feel like curry has a shot it he's is missed a lot of games Donovan too mitchell. but i think the league will give him the benefit of the doubt over both though mm-hmm. I don't see I have not seen Curry in a lot of these lists and I, I don't get it. But to keep going, Lillard, Mitchell, James Harden is in here, De'Aaron Fox is in here, even I guess you could say Tyrese Halliburton, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um and this is what makes it tricky to me is I think that there are a lot of players who have an edge in one area or another. Like Harden has played a ton of games, which is 
something he never really gets a lot of credit for, whatever. You don't have to, but he does play a lot. He's His numbers are right there. The team is very good. Mitchell, same thing. But then obviously, like, you could look and say, well, Booker's had to handle more. Or he, he's more efficient, whatever the case may be. Shea, it's like, numbers-wise, he's a monster. He's averaging like 30 a game. He just is an automatic bucket, it feels like, in the half court. But it seems not as good. He has missed some games lately. You never know uh, how people punish him. I also don't think anyone watches the Thunder. So, like, I kind of look up and I, I'm i like, is Luka Doncic the only real lock that there is. And then that leaves five slots for just a bunch of guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, the league kind of likes new dudes though. So I think the De'Aaron Fox locks is in like it's Sacramento's first playoffs series in gears. So I think he's going to get it. Um, Mitchell, well, Lillard, the team is bad, but he's just been on a scorcher this season. So the odd man out is going to be booked strictly off the missed games. And, the Suns have not really been exciting this year. <laughs> it's just kind of been just dudes hooping and just wanting the playoffs to start. But I think that's what happens when you just have two long seasons. You're just trying to get to the playoffs and teams like people have fatigue with certain teams. So, yeah, like as far as guards go, the book was always fighting an uphill battle, even when we were begging for him to make the cut on some of them, even last year. Like, he was in the MVP running, and we knew that he technically should have been all NBA. But if he didn't, we would have been like, yeah, that makes sense. It's the Suns and it's Book. <laughs> but this year, it's, it seems even tougher. It's very strange to me that he is widely understood to be, like, at the minimum, a top 15 player, right? Like, I think most anybody would would say that at this point. Any of those lists that get published before the season all had him in that range, and Obviously, Suns fans might even think he's better than that. Maybe he's top 10, top 8, whatever. But 15 feels reasonable. And yet, he only has one all-star nod that was not an injury replacement. And only one all-NBA appearance. Like, it's a... It just... He he has gotten MVP votes. Down ballot, obviously. But, like, he's gotten MVP votes. He's been in the finals. And yet like the accolades just haven't really started to pile up for him in the way that you would expect. And like, I think this year was a good opportunity. He missed the games like we talked about, but also when you said excitement, it's like a lot of his biggest moments, that bulls game, some of the big shots that he hit, a lot of that happened before the injury in the very early part of the season when people aren't necessarily thinking of it. And so I feel like the number one way that I could see him getting into more significant consideration is to have what you just talked about with Fox happen to him where the, at the tail end, when people are really like, you know, the voters are actually starting to think about it. Booker's just front and center in their mind with a bunch of big games, like what he did against Dallas. Yeah. If that could just continue. But I think even Durant being hurt right now has, has affected that because it just feels like the sun's, Exactly what we were saying in the first segment. Uh, what are they playing for? What's going on? What What's the priority right now? And so I don't think people are going to reward them the same way that where it's like, wow, Sacramento is such a good story. They're really winning. They're in the two seed, and Fox has just been driving that the whole way. Um, and I, I, I guess, I guess Book will be punished for that. But it's just, it's going to be bizarre that a player that we all think is that good at age twenty six in the middle of his prime what might be his best statistical season is going to have no all-star and no all NBA to reward it. That just, that's just weird. It doesn't happen very often. I think in terms of this year, I think it's harder when it comes to book because yes, like down to it, like he's been going off this year, but I think I'm not sure if the voters treat it that way, but he has laid some stinkers on national TV this year (laughs) and Mm -hmm. maybe just a little bit that kind of sneaks into their brains. Just when you saw the Suns like early in the year when we were talking about blowing it up and lottery and all that stuff, like and we were getting blown by like 30 to Boston and Dallas and all those teams during that one stretch, he was laying some stinkers and yeah, he was hurt and it was a growing and he was trying to work through it, but those games still happen. And he laid some bad ones out there for people to see. Yeah. Well, I, it's funny too. So like the, the bleacher report thing that I found here is the most recent, I don't even know who the writer is, uh, Grant Hughes. He actually does good stuff. Um, the all-NBA predictions that he has here, Luka and Curry first team, 
Second team, Shea and Lillard. Third team, he has Durant, which is kind of funny. And then uh, Fox and Mitchell. I have not seen Curry a lot because I, 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 I brought it up to on just basketball with, with Chris Manning that I do. And he was like, Oh yeah, I don't, I, I haven't even thought about him. Cause I think the perception around him <laughs> is that he's missed too many games also, but him and book are going to end up being pretty close, I think. And what is going on here? Hold on. My audio stopped recording. Um, Curry has played 47 games. The Warriors have nine left. So he'll be at 56. Book can finish at 55. Why is it that, I mean, I know he's better. So like I get the difference between first team versus we're only talking about probably like third team for Booker. It's all just kind of arbitrary, I guess. And Curry's going to win on perception. But yeah. <laughs> again, to reiterate my point, not rewarding this Booker season because of some missed games, really 25 or so in the grand scheme of things. It's going to feel, I think, in history a little bit ridiculous when you see that, like, Shea on a 500 team got it over Booker and some of these other players. Lillard, when he might get shut down at the end of this season. Do you think that'll that'll penalize Lillard and take him out of the running if they really did shut him down? Um, no, I think he's done enough. Uh, just like if, like, Donovan Mitchell uh, – well, not Donovan Mitchell, like – if like Darren Fox didn't play the rest of the year, I think he's got a spot locked now. Like they've clinched a spot. They they're the Kings. He's part of it. And he's really been, he has like one of the best fourth quarter scoring in yeah. the league right now. I just think he has it clinched right now. So I think the guys that have really just been going off like books game, like, yeah, he's got like, he had like 30 points in a row or plus 30 in a, in a row, like shooting like 60%. And I think that probably just doesn't translate as well for voters than just 12 points in the fourth and you won and just going off in fourth quarters and Dame just doing Dame stuff. I, like some of the stuff just doesn't translate as well. And I love Booker and I love his game. It's like one of my favorites, but voting and all-star and all that stuff, it's just not translatable, I don't think. Fox's numbers are crazy. I mean, Lillard's averaging 32 points per game, and that that number just is so eye popping. Plus the 71, it's it's going to be hard to to not vote for him. I think, and especially when that team around him, I think people kind of they would give be a him lottery a bump. team. They would exactly, be a lottery right? team without. <laughs> and even now, like recently, Grant hasn't even been playing. Simon's missed a bunch of time in the middle of the year. Fox though is interesting. He's shooting 58 percent from two, and his assists are up and his turnovers are down. Plus, like you said, the fourth quarter stuff and just the overall improvement of the team and, and all that. But that's giving him a bump because his team's usually bad. Like, yeah. And book didn't get that bump either. So yeah, I no. get what you mean. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I, I hope that book, let me put it this way. If he doesn't get, if he doesn't get one of these spots still might, but I think we're in agreement. It's unlikely. I've, I, at the very least hope he's like, number seven or eight. Like if it just goes over and, and no one even takes notice of it, um, I think we'll hear about it from him, number one. And number two, it would just be uh, pretty ridiculous overall, just like I said, historically. Um, I have some questions for you about what the playoff run will look like. It's something I've been hitting on on the show a bit, but I don't think we've done it. So I want to I wanna bounce some stuff off of you about like what the vibe's going to be like, maybe predict some headlines, maybe get in the Kevin Durant uh, you know, machine with the debate around him. We'll just bounce some ideas around as we head toward what the playoffs are going to look like, Aaron. But first, today's show, guys, brought to you by FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. No new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then. Place a bet on everything from the money line to point scorers to threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. We talked about the Suns, Lakers odds. Suns are one and a half point underdogs heading in, but the money line is pretty close. Maybe you couple a Suns win with some other stats. Uh, Booker scoring seems like it's always a fairly good one. And maybe even Anthony Davis, you just go in on the Lakers a little bit to, to pad your stats there. I don't know. Don't miss the chance either way to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. 
Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Okay, Aaron. So uh, I'm curious what you what you think. I brought Marcus Thompson on the show, and he got me thinking a little bit about the Durant side of this. I think you know we've talked about some of this before, but adding in the ankle injury now, what do you feel like will be sort of the dominant? You can can make it funny as a, a guessing a headline or guessing a Charles Barkley quote or you can go more serious, whatever it inspires in you. But what the narrative around this Suns team will be, what the kind of perception and vibe around this Suns team will be, because I think back to 2021, and it was a big new thing. They hadn't made the playoffs. Now all of a sudden they're in the finals. These young guys, Chris Paul getting a second act or fourth act or whatever it was. 2022, everything's a joke. Booker is you know, a uh, bad sport or whatever the deal was with the Lucas stuff and losing in game seven and so embarrassing, blah, blah, blah. DeAndre Ayton's going to never come back. And then we know how everything has fallen out since. So what do you feel like the big picture kind of idea about this Suns team will be as we make our way through the playoffs this season? Um, I think it's going to be like just up and down. I think, I think it was the entire vibe in the deal when it's all over, whether it's whether we win it all or we blow it, like all of it, I think it's just going to be just inconsistent, even in, at its best times. I think that's just going to be the vibe of it is incons- inconsistent. I think there's going to be games when everybody's hitting their open shots that Katie's getting them and Aiden's going off and everybody's just on fire. And we're like, this is a super team. This is going to be great. And I think there's going to be games when it looks a goddamn mess <laughs> and people are going to be like wow do these guys even know each other like i think it's going to be a lot of that i think it's going to be so up and down that i wouldn't be shocked if every series we had went seven because sometimes we look like a juggernaut and sometimes we look like we don't know each other so that's what i think the entire vibe of the team is going to be it's just going to be do these guys know each other is this the greatest team i've ever seen in my life <laughs> yeah a lot of doubt <laughs> i feel like i i don't yeah. think that you know, uh, opening weekend of the final of the of the playoffs, whatever ESPN countdown or whatever show you're watching. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people picking the Suns when they make everybody do their championship pick. Um, for better or worse, I just think it's it's going to be doubt. I think everybody in the West has that. I think a lot of uh, most people are going to head into the NBA playoffs picking the Celtics or the Bucks to win the championship, and honestly, probably just the Bucks. Like the Celtics yeah. have their own <laughs> questions right now. Um, and I don't know if that's for better or worse. I think from the Durant perspective, it's a little bit, it's going to be very different for him than it's been. I mean, obviously the injuries and every, the weirdness of of how it all has broken out is going to be its own thing. But I, I think that there's a way for this to play out where people, it is a little bit vindicating for Durant if he's able to make a deep run with this team. Like I know there will still be that idea that he's, you know, uh, just gloms on to, to other great teams and he's, you know, just making it easy on himself or whatever. That That's never really going to go away for him. But I do feel like if they make a deep run, there will be a level of respect for him because he's going to have to be amazing. Like anyone who we've watched this team the past two weeks without him, it's not pretty, yeah. right? So like, <laughs> it's kind of going to be more like those Nets teams, I think, even if it feels weird because he was traded. I do think it'll still feel like his sort of dis- like he will control the fate of the team. And I think that'll result in a certain level of appreciation for him that wasn't there maybe with the Warriors and whatnot. I don't know if it all happens. Like, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but I think that that will turn from, wow, Durant's doing this again to, okay, holy crap. Like he he's a monster and and they might really do this because of him. Yeah, I think the KD stuff in the playoffs, I think it's just going to translate well in the book stuff. The worry that I have is if Aiton isn't engaged, that part, like if they can keep him engaged. And in any series, are we going to have the best point guard on the floor? Like, are we? <laughs> in any of these, ser- in any potential series that we have, are I mean, we going to have. <laughs> that was- <laughs> but for the most part, we won't have the most trustworthy point guard on the floor or mm-hmm. the most athletic one for sure. Like 
it's going to be yeah. that's the biggest change from this year i think it's going to be mm. the, one of our biggest liabilities is going to be one of our best players out there and that's going to be one of the biggest holes and questions we're going to have to ask about later that's true that's true. Yeah. Jamal Murray, John Morant, De'Aaron Fox, Steph Curry, Kyrie Irving, Shea Gilgis <laughs> Alexander. Yeah. You just go through it. Um, yeah. I wonder how the Chris Paul thing will be, um, especially if he sort of, you know, plays like he's been playing all year throughout the run, even if they keep winning, even if the Suns were to win a title <laughs> and he's just sort of average or ordinary. I think people, if it really all the way happens and the Suns really do get it done, I think people will appreciate him, obviously, and and be happy that he finally got one. But it'll feel a little bit more like, I don't know, I don't want to be like extreme about it, but like I know you know, Gary Payton, Carl Malone. Yeah. It's like, Lakers, all right. right. It'll feel that go, way, right? Yeah, it's going to be like, ah, go home and rest now, please. Like, let us do our yeah. thing <laughs> and let us have the team that we want to have now. I think that's what it's going to be like is oh god that's over like we don't have to watch him grind it out and make us insanely mad anymore sometimes and he can accept just like go be a six man somewhere and just be awesome like stop pushing yourself to play 40 minutes in the regular (laughs) season for nothing like you don't have to do this anymore man like be free yeah Yeah. i don't know i think it i think it kind of will trend in that direction i i don't i that's one of the biggest questions and i don't even know if it needs to happen for them to win because i think booker and duran is going to be enough kind of like you just said but but you just named the point guards that are in the west right now they are attackers and scorers and people that just go at you and they can do it all and we're the only ones still playing that early 2000s Mm. real point guard point guard stuff and sooner or later you kind of just have to get with it yeah, no, absolutely. I just wonder if he will have, like, does he have enough for one or two moments like he did in 2021? Like, is there is there that game six against the Clippers or something even close to it left in the tank for him? Or is it, you know, you just hope that he's at least a little more efficient and, uh, you know, a little better defensively and, and that's sort of his, like, max in the playoffs. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll see. But it should be interesting. I'm ready for injuries to stop being the dominant thing about this team i think you are as well hopefully by the playoffs that is not the narrative but that'll wrap us up today guys game day tonight i will have a recap of that after the buzzer will be off friday so hit follow or subscribe to get this show in your feed tomorrow and beyond whether you're on youtube or your favorite podcast platform in the meantime go make locked on nba your second listen today get caught up on everything else going on around the association that shows available on all podcast platforms as well and i'll catch you all later tonight.